Hello, and thank you for joining the Spring Global Conference. My name is Hilke Visser. I'm uh, with the Things Industries. Uh, many of you are probably already familiar with our web console, but to uh, scale your deployments, clicking around in the console is usually not the way to go if you want to register a thousand gateways or a thousand devices. While at the same time, uh, switching to the API is maybe too big of a step, and that is where the CLI comes in. So in this session, I'll show you how to become a power user of the CLI. Um, I'll begin by setting up the command line interface and then give you some examples on how you can use it to register a lot of devices, to modify a lot of devices, and uh, yeah, to become a power user. I'll um, install and use the command line interface in an Ubuntu 20.04 virtual machine running in uh, the multipass app. Um, if you install multipass on your own computer, you should be able to repeat the exact same steps that I'm going to take. Uh, and uh, hopefully it will work exactly the same as uh, on my screen. So what we'll do is we'll launch a uh, demo instance uh, with two CPUs, one gig of memory and eight gigs of disk. Okay, with the uh, virtual machine ready, we are going to mount the current directory into the VM. Multipass mount dot demo into home Ubuntu uh, demo. And then we'll open a shell in the instance. We'll start by um, installing some uh, essentials. And with that ready, we're going to install the tools that we're actually going to use. Uh, we'll use JQ for working with JSON. And we'll use USQL to work with databases. Now we are ready to install the CLI of the Think Stack. After installing the stack, we are going to link or alias the CLI to TTI LW CLI. And because I'm used to it, uh, also TTN LW CLI. And now we are ready to start using the CLI. Um, let's first configure it. Um, we have to configure it to use our tenant on the ThingStack Cloud. So in my case, I'll be using the HDVisor tenant on the E1 cluster of the ThingStack Cloud. So I'll uh, configure it like this, TTN LW CLI use, and I'll configure that for my user. Uh, we'll also be working with the Things uh, join server. Um, so we need to change a few things in the config. Um, down here, we have to change the address of the join server to join then again for the device template converter and the device claiming server and the QR code generator. Okay, now we are ready to log in. We do that um, with TTN LW CLI login. And because we are in a virtual machine, the uh, standard OAuth callback doesn't work, so we will have to disable that. Now we have to open this in our browser and if you haven't logged in yet, it will ask you to log in, but I'm already logged in, so I can now copy this authorization code and back in the terminal, paste that, and it looks like we are logged in. Uh, you can verify that uh, by running the TTNLW CLI auth info command, and it will uh, show you who you are and what uh, rights you have. Another way to log in is uh, with an API key. Um, that way you can, uh, you only have to log in once and you don't have to renew your authorization after you log out. Um, so let's create an API key. We do that um, for our organization, my org. 
that works like this, TTN L W C Li will give it the right to create applications in my organization. Uh, we'll give it the right to list applications in the organization and we'll give it all application rights. Okay, now we can copy this key and again uh, run the login command but then with the API key flag set to that API key. Again, we can run the auth info command and we'll see that we are logged in now as the organization. Before we move on, I wanted to give you a few uh, tips for using the CLI effectively. Um, first of all is uh, use the auto completion and the uh, um, the suggestions that the CLI gives you. So whenever you type uh, TTN, LW, CLI, applications, list, and then start typing something, you can press tab, and it will show you the possible things. So in my case, I want to select the organization ID, uh, and it will also complete that, and that was my org, and then we see that we don't have any applications. Another thing, when you use the CLI, it is very uh, useful to combine that with the JQ tool that we installed. So uh, let's take a look again at that auth info command. We can pipe that into JQ. We can uh, use JQ to select uh, a field that is in this, uh, in this object. Um, yeah, next, um, using colors. The CLI has some colors for uh, the log messages that it throws. I like to see those, so you um, need to export uh, color term is one. And if you want to have that persist, you can put it into your uh, bash or C in my case. Um, finally, if you, um, like me, like to, uh, to type less, you can uh, also shorten a lot of commands. Um, and even what you can do is shorten the entire uh, CLI command. So that way you don't even have to type TTN LW CLI, but you can maybe alias it to TT. So I can say TT app LS. And that basically means the things uh, TTN LW CLI applications list. It's uh, much shorter. Moving on, um, what we came here to do was create entities in bulk. So imagine that you have a database of entities uh, or a CSV file. Uh, you might want to create those all at the same time in one go instead of having to click around the console and create them one by one. Um, so I prepared a CSV file with uh, applications that we'll create uh, and a, another CSV file with some end devices that we're going to create. Yeah, like I said, often this, uh, this information comes from a database, so we are going to treat our folder uh, with CSV files as a database. Uh, that is why we installed the USQL tool. Um, Okay, we forgot to link that. There we go. Um, so let's see how that works. We can select everything from uh, applications. And just like with a SQL database, we can now run SQL queries on our CSV file which is really nice. Um, but what we came here to do, let me quickly alias USQL to there we go. 
Okay, so now let's combine the USQL tool and the JQ tool to generate JSON that the command line interface can process. So we're going to run a query with USQL on the demo thing. Here we select the application ID and the name from the applications file. Looks a bit like this. We can then pipe it into JQ and then uh, process that because the CLI expects it in a slightly different format. There we go. And now we can pipe this into TTNLW CLI applications create in our organization my org. And that is how you use the CLI to create a lot of applications in a very short time. We can then see that the applications have been created by running TTN LW CLI applications list. As I said before, we can pipe that into JQ. And uh, yeah, there we see uh, our applications. Beautiful. Okay, we uh, can do the same for end devices. So uh, let's take that list of end devices and register them in our uh, manufacturing application. So uh, we first create the manufacturing application itself. And then we take a similar approach as with the applications from the demo database. QC, we select the device ID, the dev AUI, and the app key from end devices. There we go. Um, again, we pipe that into JQ. And there we go. And again, we pipe that into TTN LW CLI and devices create into the manufacturing application, these devices supports join, uh, join UI is, okay, let me quickly copy paste that, oh, that's too much. They are Lorwen version 102. And I'm setting the frequency plan ID to EU. TTN. And there we go. That's how we create a list of end devices in, uh, in one go without clicking through the console. Now we will use a script to make every device claimable in the joint server. Uh, we will um, generate a claim code, then update the device registration in the thing stack uh, with that claim code, generate a QR code for the end device and uh, update our local database. And the script looks like this. As you can see, we add a uh, column claim code to our table. And then for each device, we generate a claim code. This needs to be uppercase hexadecimal. 
uh, we update the device in the local database, then we use the CLI to set a claim authentication code in the thing stack, and we generate a QR code. Let's run that. Okay, so if we now take a look at the CSV file with our end devices, we can see that the script added a claim code column with all the generated claim codes in the, for our end devices. We also see that it generated the QR codes that our customer can use for claiming the end device if we print them on a sticker and stick that on the end device. Um, but let's quickly take a look at how a customer can bulk claim those end devices. Um, so instead of sending the uh, plain text app keys to the customer, we can generate a CSV file for them that only contains the dev EOI and the claim code. So let's uh, see how we do that. We write um, So again, with USQL, we create a table. This creates a, a CSV file for them, customer one and devices.csv. As select the join EUI, we copy that the dev UI and the claim code from and the faces so here we see that CV file join UI dev UI and the claim code and then I've written a little script that claims those end devices into application 01. Uh, we select everything from that uh, customer one CSV file that we created. We choose a dev, ad, uh, dev ID based on the dev UI. And then we claim the end device into our application using dev UI join UI and the claim code from the CSV file. And that works like this. So that's it. I hope this session gave you a good overview of how you can use the command line interface to bulk create devices, uh, to bulk update them, in this case making them claimable, and to bulk claim these devices. Um, it's uh, going to save you a lot of clicking around in the console and you don't have to mess around with the API, which can be quite complicated. Um, but uh, as you could see, the CLI is a nice, uh, a nice way to manage a lot of devices, uh, to script um, little programs that do exactly what you want. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, you can use this for, uh, for your uh, applications. Thanks for watching.